Hi friends and fellow woodturners, Richard Ford here coming to you from Nova Scotia, Canada. Five years ago I made a series of videos of me turning a gnarly old cherry burl. Well it turned out pretty good and through the process of turning this burl I developed a tool for hollowing that I call the RJF Hollower. This is the tool here, I'm still using it five years later so it can't be all bad. I've been editing my videos and I'm reposting them, so I want to repost these videos of uh, hollowing that gnarly burl. I'm going to shut up now and we'll get on and watch the videos. See you next time. Safety. It's a big thing in the workshop. If you don't feel safe doing something or you just don't feel comfortable, don't do it. You're the only person who can keep you safe. And if you don't do it, no one else can. Hi, uh, welcome back to the shop. Now, over the next uh, couple of days, uh, I'm going to attempt to make from this old gnarly burl, it's a cherry burl, it's been sitting in the shop for a while, it's pretty dry I think, although probably wet when we get in it. I'm going to attempt to make a vase. So the, the first problem that I always have with a burl like this is trying to decide where I'm going to mount it and how I'm going to cut. So the first thing I do is kind of look at it like this and think okay where's the center line it comes down to here and when I look at it the other way the center line is here so this uh, branch there's a there's a dead <laughs> hole here where there was a dead branch so I don't know how successful we're going to be with this one but I'm going to go to the bandsaw and cut this off here and cut this off here now I don't know if we'll have enough good wood here to turn it down and hold it in the chuck and if we don't I'll end up putting a glue block on one end but the first thing I'm going to do is trim off these pieces then we'll mount it between centers and see where we go from there Okay, here I am back again, and you can see that I've uh, I trimmed a piece off the side, this little branch that was sticking out on the side. I trimmed this piece off of here, and I trimmed this piece off the bottom. And looking at the bottom, it looks fairly sound, so I'm hopeful I might be able to make a, a place to hold this with the jaws of my chuck. So the next thing is to mount this between centers. these pieces. Now, try and figure out where, where the center is center that I'm going to use anyway. So if we spin this uh, on the lathe, white <laughs> piece of material, maybe it will help help you see what I'm seeing. Uh, we have a significant hollow in this piece here so uh, there's either going to be a big indent in whatever you turn, a big piece of missing material or perhaps by moving the center we can and it would be this here is going to be the big hollow so here we'd have a hollow because when we bore it out we would break through and this would all be missing. That's not necessarily a bad thing but we can maybe minimize it a little bit by moving the centers. So we move the bulk of the material over a little bit and 
see what that looks like. Well, it's a, it's a bigger solid looking area there now. Uh, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do much better than that. This is going to be a long thin. Well, here we, we can start to think perhaps we could make two smaller ones. Because, uh, because of this narrowness here, we could make that a neck. And we could make this a little global one on this end. Not sure now. You know, if it was a big old round burl, it would be easy. But they don't always come in a shape that makes it easy. I'm looking now from here to here, the center line through here. I can see there's only about three quarters of an inch here, if that. So I think the next thing to do would be to turn a little bit of profile, start getting this round, and see what starts to happen. Um, it's, it's hard to see completely here, but certainly we can still move it over. Um, because we have quite a lump on this side. So I think I will move it a little bit now I, now I think of that. Certainly, uh, weight-wise, it seems to be a lot more balanced. This is pretty soft in this area, so I'm a little nervous about that. But there, that gives us uh, less of an indent there, and more of a shape that I think we can work with. First thing is going to be getting rid of this lump here I think. I'm going to run into trouble here because of this old dead hole. which may bring us back to here maybe. So we'll start off, we'll take this little lump off here and see how we do. Well, you can see that it's pretty soft on this end here. And uh, just it was on the bark too, which isn't a good thing. I should have cut the bark off a little bit, I guess. If I was smarter, I would have done that. This underneath is quite hard. Okay. Interesting here. Well, we're not on any bark anymore. So hopefully it'll hold. a little light to cut with the uh, ball gouge.
There's some fairly rotten spots in this. Not quite sure what we're going to get into there as you start to see some, some part of the burl here uh, exposed. That's very pretty. We're definitely going to have a void here. Just here, so if we get down to. Yeah, we might have enough to grip it without putting a glue block on. We check it's tight. Tail stop. Feels fairly sound. And hopefully we'll get uh, a nice gripping surface there. Beautiful little burl section there. It's very, it's very hard. So I think that's good. I'll just square this corner up here so that uh, we have a nice square corner for the jaws to come against. Just finish this off and then I think I'm going to spin it round and put that in the chuck. There. This is the little center uh, from one way that I was using. It has a spring point on it that recesses and it just has no uh, no serrations or anything and you saw how it drove this and let me turn it it's just amazing and the nice thing is that now when I'm turning it round this same diameter will fit on the live center Now I've mentioned in other videos I use a pipe because I have a little arthritis in my fingers and if I try and tighten this here it's just too painful. So why hurt yourself eh? We're supposed to get smarter as we get older and this allows me to tighten it up nice and tight without hurting myself. There. Wonderful. Well, when you reach this stage, you jump to another level of security. We're not just between centers now. We're held nicely in a chuck. And we can start to think about what shape we're going to put on this. Now, I see this as the top end, and this is the base. So the base would probably end around about here. And the top, I've yet to decide how I'm going to finish that, but uh, we have this large indent here, which is definitely going to break through. So what you do is you finish the outside first, and then you worry about hollowing it. And uh, we'll just carry on and see what we can do here. We'll, we'll work at this little end here, first of all. Loose part coming off here. Seem to be almost round here, which we are, and round up here. So this is really going to be quite a tall, thin.